left time, so we got the the loy lau hoi song. So we stick with the loy lau bit there. So normally, a lot of you won't be doing this yet because what happens is that we'll be showing you how why we want loy lau. The reason why we want to retain them is because it's a striking system. You want to be able to hit them. Okay. So, but I'll just run through. So for those who won't be doing it, but I'll just show you where it's leading. Why we need to do the structure flow, so we're only going to intercept with the tan or with the woo. That means that if we're striking, the strike must come off either the tan or the woo. Okay? So if I just grab Rich and I'll show you. Just the first part is that because we're intercepting with either one of them, the first thing we do is that we look at the strike, but because the palm strike comes before the fist because the palm and the fist is identical. How do you get there? So we know that from the structure flow, we've got the tan that comes into the woo. Okay, so we just look at the tan first because it's the first is the easy one to look at. So in the form, what we've got is that we've got the tan. So we know the tan is coming up, then it goes into the foot cell, and then it goes into the woo. Alright, so what supersedes that when we first time we see the punch. What we do is that we see the tan punch, that, and then that turns into a tan, and then we withdraw that. All right, so I'm going to explain to you why it goes into the tan, or it straightens up after you've done the punch, okay? Because uh, it's actually part of a cycle. But this address the first part is that because we're a bridging system, which means that we do chi so. The reason why we do chi so is because we want to control the bridge. If we've got the bridge, we're not going to pull the hand back to do the strike, we're going to strike from the bridge. All right? So the first thing we, I'll show you is that, how do you create a strike from the bridge? If, if Richard's a fur punch, any punch, when he throws the punch, when I'm from this position here, I've got an option to strike from here. So long as I've got the other position covered, I've got a strike here, but it's going to be a palm strike. Yes? All right? So if you throws the other hand, same thing. If I've got the tan, Rather than just make it into a woo to hold the position, I'm going to now use the woo position for the strike. So that's why you can see now, if you just throw the punch again, you know you don't actually need for, once you've got the position and you've got control of the bridge, then you can do the strike. If you came with the other hand, it makes no difference. As long as you've got control of this position, you've got the strike. So, but the strike comes off the bridge. So it doesn't matter now, once we get into the position, you throw the punch again, and I've got this position, that strike from the woo is now going to become a fist, and then you use the fist instead. Yes? All right? So say we're intercepted with the woo, it's going to be the same thing. Why do we lead with the stronger hand? Because we're going to put the stronger hand and the stronger leg. It's because if you're right-handed, it's because we're going to make the strike from the leading hand. Yes? Okay, so say for instance, I intercepted with, with the woo. So if you punch any punch, doesn't matter. If I intercept with the woo from this position, then I'm going to have to do a back fist. When you throw the other punch from this position, there's the, there's the woo, foot woo, then you're going to create that strike from there. But if I didn't want to use the fist, and I go back to the original, when you throw the punch, the woo, foot woo, then it becomes a strike with the woo, with the structure of the woo. Can you see? So what <coughs> happens is that because Wing Chun is a close combat start. I really need to be in this range. Yes, um, there's no point in being here because I can't even reach. So the reason why we bridge is so that I can actually get into range. All right, so that's why I'm saying when we look in the form, thank you Rich, when we look in the form, after we've done the, the structure of the Wu and the Tan, you've got the punch, okay? So, and then opens up and then you pull it back, all right? So that's before we have what we call the Lin Wang Kin. So Lin Wang Kin means repeating or recycling fists. It's just the fist is repeated over and over again, all right? So, so if I just sorry, grab Rich back again for the, for the demonstration. Now, what happens is that if I, what I'm not gonna do is make a strike towards, uh, if there's an opening, because I'm out of range, I'm not gonna make the strike. The first one I do is I'm going to make a bridge because otherwise I don't have control within this distance. Because we train in the chi soul, it doesn't matter when we get contact. So what happens is if I get a situation where 
he makes the first move, then what's happened? He's going to have to come in, close the gap before I actually intercept on him. So regardless of what he does, he just come in and I'm going to close the bridge. So when I close on the bridge there, I've also closed the distance. Now I'm actually in striking distance. I want you guys, when you're training this, is just to put the hand in front of you and look for the other person. Do not go for the bridge initially. But what I want you to get used to is that if you make a move, I want to make sure that if you come towards me, I want to make sure that you are behind your guard. So what I don't want you to do is chasing the hand. Yes? Because what happens is that if you're following that hand, you have no idea what the other hand is doing. So what you're going to do is that, if you watch from the guard position, all I'm going to do is that I'm just going to put the guard, this guard, in front of me, step behind it, this one exactly the same, and I'm stepping behind both my guard. Yes? So if anyone comes towards me, I'm only going to step and look for the person. So I don't want you striking the person, I want you looking for the person. So it doesn't matter what his head does, whether he ducks or whatever, he ducks, do whatever you want. You know where the head is because you're never, you're only ever looking for his centre. Okay? So that's why I say when we, when, we, when we need to strike the person, there's no point in striking him from here because he's well out of range. You can kick him from here, but you're not going to be able to hit him from that range from here. Even if you did, you're only going to touch the person. When we get the bridge, I can now safely cross in order to get the strike. Okay? So that means that the strike comes off the bridge. So if you've got the woo, fork, woo, all you do is that in place of the woo, get the fist. If it's the tan, it makes a difference. So say for instance, I'm in the middle and I'm going straight down the middle just because there's a gap there and I can control my center. When it comes in, what happens is that I come in with the, with the tan. Then the tan, for the third type of punch, we're gonna go in from the tan and into the strike there. Can you see? So what I'm saying is that we don't throw the punches freestyle to try to get in. We have to have the bridge. Because otherwise, if you haven't got the bridge, you don't actually, you, you actually, you're relying on your skill to actually hit the it's like a, It's like a target practice trying to hit the person. But if you put your guard up and I'm here, then I know where he is just because from the position. So I've got the actual range to actually hit the person. But all it is is that if I'm here, again, I've got the range to, to, to actually come in. So what you don't want to do is try to throw the punch from there. What you do want to do when you want, if you do want to intercept from there, you're bridging. You're not actually trying to hit the person. But he doesn't know because what happens is that if I throw anything fast towards him, I don't care what you're doing, that's your reaction. You move a block or you try to do something else. But once you've got that contact, then you're in a position where you're able to put your strike in. Okay? Thank you. So when we look at the next part of, of, of the striking, is that what we call lean wang So that's what we call the repeating fist, all right? because it's recycling. So what happens is that, what type of strikes do we have? Well, we've only got the strikes from either the tan or from the wu. All right? So how, do, how does it repeat? Well, if we put it into a cycle, say for instance, we just do the first one, it's one, two, three. All right? You can make it as straight as you want, or you can go to the side. I'll explain to you why this can go to the side, or you can go straight. Or, if you have a woo, there. Now, when we go for the woo, as in the form, you do the punch, and you go into the tan, and you, put, and you pull it back. All right? So why do we do that? Punch. Yes. So now you've got the first repeating punch, singular punch. All right? And you add the second one. All right? Got a punch here. Now from here, you can make that as straight as you want or as round as you want. So there's no restriction in the angle at which we punch. If I rip it again. If I'm standing at this angle here, coming in from, 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 from here, if I make that punch, I can get that punch to whatever angle I, I need to get that punch. If I'm here, you can go for the straight punch, but if you're going for a straight punch, all right, and, I, and I'm pushing from here, there's no reason why you can't do a punch from here now. So when I show you the first punch, we've got two punches, one from the tan, and then one from the woo. So this is my guard, this is my tan, this is my woo. Whichever hand connects first, if it's the woo, the punch from here, yes? If it comes in and it connects with this hand, because I made the move from there, then the punch is going to come from the tan. Either way, 
if you get that. Yeah, how does that then repeat? So on the woo, so it's it's okay. going now, now watch this, and, and I'm going I'm I'm to make that uh, how we repeat. Now, we only use the lean ranking once we've got a target shot. So you're not going to just come in there with your lean ranking, but punch, first one, second one, and it's just going to keep driving in, yes? So it doesn't matter what position I've got, I'm only going to carry on driving once I've got it. But what I'm saying is that it makes no difference the way to set with the tan, because once I'm in the tan, I want to make the strike, then it goes into the woo, just replace it with the fist. So when you're looking at the guard position here, I've only got the woo, the strike from the woo, which becomes the punch. Punch, tan, yes? But keep your fist, because it's, a, it's initially, what it was is just our structure flow. Woo, foot, woo, yes? So if you keep doing that, there's your recycling fist. When you put them both together, there's your punch. You can make it as straight as you want, or you can make it as wide as you want. So it doesn't matter the angle. If I can punch into the angle, it means that if his hands are slightly out, of course, if it's like I'll take the inside line, but it means that I can actually cover with the punch here. And this punch here, rather than go to do this, it's going to be the tan. If you punch, if you've got the tan, why don't I just bring the fist in? There it is. Can you see? So what it looks like is this, punch, punch. There's two different types of punches there. What you've got, you've got one coming from the woo and one coming from the tan. Yes? Or not? Yeah, sorry, not be doing it too okay. yeah. But when it comes from the tan, yes. it comes to there, then let where me, does it go? Let me, let me slow it right down. Right. We've only got two means to intercept. We've either got the tan or we've got the woo. If I slow it down now and I'm going to intercept with the tan, so, now watch this. If I'm going to intercept with the tan, the fist must come off the tan. Yes? So, what I'm going to do from here, instead of making it into a woo, I'm going to make it into a fist. Yes? Yeah. So, if you punch, then it's just going to go, come straight into a fist. Yes? But if you've got the blockage and you know that you've got the contest, there's no point in going for the then you punch, if you know you, if something's in the way, you use your other fist. But what I'm saying is that when there's a position where you can strike, so put your hand up now. So, so this is how we're going to strike. It's not going to be trying to hit the hand out of the way because we want contact. We want to be able to control his centre and I want to be able to control the actual structure of his hand. So when I hit it fast, I take out the structure and I'm in from this position. When I've got the first position, then you're going to go into your Lin Wang Kun. What you're not going to do is try going from this position, try get Lin Wang Kun in there, okay? So regardless of what he does when he comes in, my first thing is I need to bridge because it's distance now. I need to get into the bridge before I can fire off a strike. So, but you don't know which hand you're going to intercept with, whether it's going to be the town or the wood, because if I just do an interception, which hand touches first? Yes, I don't know, all right? So when he throws in, then I'm in this position, now I've got the position from here, now once he moves, then you can get your striking from that, because you, he needs to move, because I need to know what he's going to do from this position. I've got his balance there, but when he moves, he may move away. In which case, if he moves away, then Loyola all song, I have to follow him. But then he may want to go into me. But you're not going to guess, because that's why you train your chi soul or your tang soul for. You've got to spend hours of sticking to the person, Whatever he does with that hand there, whether he pulls it away, pushes it into you, you've got to just follow the person. Yes? All right? So can you see? So when we're looking at, it's a bit advanced for uh, a lot of you here, but when we do the striking, it's not just going to be trying to hit the person. When you've got the bridge, you know where the person is when you've got the bridge. Yes? Rather than just trying to, you know what's going to happen. If you do that, you're going to get this type of reaction. But, it's, but because we do the bridging, as soon as we touch, we can open up the bridge. As soon as we touch, we can open up the bridge. Can you see? All right? So we strike off the bridge, but we start with the palm because we always have the tan that becomes the wu, or the wu for wu. So when you're doing your Liu Man Kun, it can be as straight as you want, or whatever angle you want. It makes no difference. Even if you had the hand, the straight punch that comes off the tan, you can still get back into the Lin Wang Kun. So you either got a punch from the tan or from the Wu. Can you see? So that means that it doesn't matter whether we're going to go inside 
or on the outside of the, of, the, of the person. But what we do in both sides is that we engage the bridge. All right? So if we're not going to strike from here, then you've got your other strikes to come in with, 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 your, with your palm, yes? All right? But if we're just looking at the fist itself, once I've got a position, then we have to close the range. Because there's no point in striking from this range because you can't reach, yes? So we get the contact first from the bridging position, take out the bridge, get to position, and now you've got your positions in there, yes? Right, any questions? Right. Sorry, sorry, what's the question? What's the difference between a block and a bridge? A block and a bridge? Uh, one is say we don't essentially block anything, we work everything off what we call deflection. Right. When you're blocking, you want to take on the energy at full, uh, at full value. So what happens is we just got to do this. Okay, I'm going to have a thing where he's going to use his, his strength there. Uh, right, okay, let's just grab Steve. Okay, so, right. so what's going to happen is that he's going to power up his, his hand to maximum power. All right, and then I'm going to engage the energy, but I have to do it on the on the um, concept of that we're going to deflect the energy, but I'm not going to take it at face value. So I'll show you, just give you one example here. If I'm going to push the hand at face value, if it's coming into me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly deflect it over to the side and I'm going to create a slight deflection. Now it's hard for me to hold that, but if you give me the other hand here and I keep him constantly, if you just relax and then, but you don't tell me when you put in the pull power. So you're just going to move, flow wherever you want to flow, but I'm just going to take on the power here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep him back. I don't care what he does to me, I'm just going to keep him back every time, but I'm going to do it with deflection. I'm not going to do it with trying to take him on and think, how much energy can I absorb into him? I'm just going to deflect him. All right? So what I want you guys to do is to get used to deflecting the energy. So I'm actually deflecting it. I'm not actually taking it or trying to absorb it. Yes? So when we've got a bridging situation here, if he powers up to max with his stronger hand, I'm actually busy trying to deflect the energy off me. What I'm not trying to do is trying to take it and trying to absorb it into my body. The moment I touch the hand, I'm actually working on deflection rather than, can you see, but if you're directing it, I'm deflecting it by there, there, there. But because we played hours and hours of this bridging, the moment he presses my hand, just grab my hand, I can deflect the energy. It's got nothing to do with power on power, I'm just busy trying to deflect the power off me. Can you see? So again, let me ask the question. Yeah? So when we block something, I'm just taking it full value. I'm not deflecting it. I'm just see, so I'm trying to smash it out of the way. Can you see? So we don't really block anything. What we do is that we create the angle so that it's actually always on a deflection. So if I slow it right down, when the power comes in here, I'm deflecting it to there. If I do it to the extreme, pushes me again, I'm deflecting it there, I'm deflecting it somewhere, but I'm doing it by sticking to him. And if I do micro movements, i.e. the internal movements of deflecting him, and he's trying to get the power in, he's as strong as he wants, much power, he's not gonna get the power if I keep on deflecting his power. And that's why we practice the hours and hours of our bridging, so that when we touch the hand, full deflection. If he tries to power in, he's not gonna get the power in because I'm deflecting the power, yes? Alright, that makes sense? Alright, any other questions?